Fear is subjective, but we can all agree on several elements required to make something scary. Atmosphere, story, and character. Pyramid Head manages to capture all of these things, one slow, creepy step at a time. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and click on the links in the description to vote on upcoming content. Silent Hill is a puzzling town, one of those places that means more than it appears to mean, especially in Silent Hill 2. The basic story is simple enough. James Sunderland gets a letter from his wife to meet her in the fog-infested town, and uh, she's been dead for a while, so that's weird. While it'd probably be best to rule out as a cruel prank, James ventures to the town, and unbeknownst to us, he's got some inner demons to deal with. This leads him to some interesting characters, and of course, creatures that have stepped out of nightmares too, because it's a horror game. But you really start to miss those random radiostatic filled encounters when you step into that hotel room. Pyramid Head is basically the epitome of terrifying. He looks like some disgruntled butcher with a really crazy helmet, and when he's going around, the mood of the game shifts from bizarre, exploratory horror to complete what the f is going on! Probably one of the most memorable horror encounters in gaming history is when you walk into the room and he's just raping a set of mannequin legs. It's definitely unsettling, and it comes out of nowhere, so you have no choice but to watch from the closet. Should you, like, help the legs? Should you have just left the room and ran? He brings out a sense of pure helplessness in the player, especially since you don't get to decide what to do. The encounter is a cutscene, forcing the control out of your hands. Once the scene is over, you're left wondering what the heck Pyramid Head is, or worse, if he's gonna come back. That's the thing about your run-ins with him. There's no real clue as to when he's showing up. You already have enough to deal with, and now there's a pyramid rapist with a blade the size of your entire body running around too. It's like facing off against Nemesis or Scissor Man. You know they're gonna show up, you just don't know when. However, you get to fight Nemesis if you want, and you can hide from the Scissor Man. But Pyramid Head, he's, he's just kinda there. There is a boss fight of sorts, but it's not actually all that difficult as you can shoot him until he leaves or just, well, avoid him and then he leaves. Okay, so thanks for the battle, I guess. Why were you stalking us? Anyway, the only thing that's worse than an unkillable stalker is one that leaves because he's kind of, like, bored of you. Most indestructible horror villains most definitely want you dead, but Pyramid Head, he's, seems like he's just kind of messing with you. And when he's bored, he leaves, only to return again and harass you some more. Once you start traveling around with Maria, that's when Pyramid Head gets real twisted. He kills her in front of you. Don't worry, she comes back. But that's fine, because he kills her again, and this time, he brings a friend. So, the whole point is to kill Maria, not you. You just get to watch, again. Even when he's pursuing the both of you, his attacks are focused solely on her. It'd be much easier if it were about killing you, but it's not about killing you, it's about killing her and making you feel bad about it. Besides, your weapons don't really matter against him. Not that Silent Hill has all that many to offer, but whatever. In horror games, we're used to being the victim, but that's not really the case this time around. In fact, the entire reason we have to deal with Pyramid Head is because of James's overwhelming guilt. So, in a way, we're kind of the culprit here. We find out later, uh, spoiler alert, that James killed his wife, and the guilt he feels from it manifests into Pyramid Head. The theme of guilt is something that carries over whenever Pyramid Head is in a game. He serves as a violent, horrifying reminder of what one of the characters has done. No amount of shots to that triangular noggin of his will put him down, only admittance and acceptance of what they've done. That's probably why he just kind of kills himself in the second game, along with his other pyramid buddy. James has to come to terms with the truth, so the menace isn't needed anymore. I needed someone to punish me for my sins. But that's all over now. At least that's the general interpretation, but it's basically the best we or the community can do when the game doesn't give you concrete answers. Which is why this character is actually so scary. He doesn't spell out his intentions, he just shows up to make your life a living hell until he's done with you. And you can't kill him, which is kind of alright, we guess, since he doesn't really want to kill you either. So how do you deal with something like that? Basically you don't, you just gotta go through the motions till you get to the end of the game. It truly makes for a torturous psychological trip, one that solidifies Pyramid Head as the scariest video game enemy of all time. Thanks for watching Mojo Plays. Be sure to subscribe and click on the link in the description below to check out our suggestion page and vote on what content you'd like to see us cover next.